Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and this is day 9 of my book review. Let's get going. So for this one we'll be talking about like the most hyped, most anticipated reads for Halloween and all that fun stuff. Let's get going. So my first book is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. When Louise finds, her, finds out her parents have died, she dreads going home. She doesn't want to leave her daughter with her ex and fly to Charleston. She doesn't want to deal with her family home, stuffed to the rafters with the remnants of her father's academic career and her mother's lifelong obsession with puppets and dolls. She doesn't want to learn how to live without the two people she knew and loved her best in the world. Most of all, she doesn't want to deal with her brother Mark, who never left her hometown, gets fired from one job after another and resents her success. Unfortunately, she will need his help to get the house ready for sale because it will take more than some new paint on the walls and clearing out a lifetime of memories to get this place on the market. But some houses don't want to be sold and their home has other plans for borrowing for them. My next book is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. They were 11 when they sent the killer to prison. They were heroes, but they were liars. Naomi Shaw used to believe in magic 22 years ago as she and her two best friends Kathy and Olivia spent the summer warming the woods, imagining a world of ceremony and wonder. They call it the goddess game. The summer ended suddenly when Naomi was attacked. Miraculously, she survived her 17 stab wounds and lived to identify the man who had hurt her. The girl's testimony brought away a serial killer, wanted for murdering six women. They were heroes? and they were liars. For decades, the fans have kept a secret worth killing for. But now Olivia wants to tell and Naomi tends to find out what really happened in the woods, no matter how dangerous the truth turns out to be. My next book is also by King Alice Marshall and it is The Narrow. Everyone has heard the story of The Narrow. The river that runs behind the outward school is only a few feet across and seemingly placid, but beneath the surface. The, the waters are deep and vicious, and said that no one who has fallen has ever survived. Aiden White knows that not tr that is not true. Six years ago, she saw back and fought enough, fall into the narrow, and live. Delphine, who now lives in careful isolation, is sealed off from the world. Even a single drop of unpurified water could be deadly to her, and no one but Aiden has any idea why. Aiden has never told anyone what she saw or spoken to Delphine, but since but now, unable to uncover her tuition. She has to make a deal. Her expenses will be paid in return for serving as a living companion to Delphine. Aiden finds herself drawn to the strange and mysterious girl, and the two of them begin to unravel each other's secrets. Then Aiden discovers what happened to the last girl who lived with Delphine. She was found half drowned on dry land. Suddenly, Enid is awakening up to wet footprints tracking to the end of her bed. The sound of her rain on the wind windows when the skies are clear, and the ghostly silhouette in her doorway. Something is haunting Delphine, and now it's coming for Enid too. My next book is Episode 13 by Craig Delumi. Fade to Black is Episode 13 takes them to every ghost hunter's holy grail, the Paranormal Research Foundation. This brooding and derelict mansion holds secrets and clues about bizarre experiments that took place there in the 1970s. It's also famously haunted, and the team's hopes the scientific techniques and high-tech gear will prove it. But as the house begins to reveal itself to them, proof of an afterlife might not be everything Matt dreamed of. A story told in broken pieces in tapes, journals, and correspondence, this is the story of episode 13, and how everything went terribly, horribly wrong. My next book is All Hallows by Christopher Golden. It's Halloween night, 1984, in Coventry, Massachusetts, and two families are unraveling. Up and down the street, horrifying secrets are being revealed, and all the while, mixed in with the trick-or-treaters of all ages, four children who do not belong are walking door to door, merging with the kids of Parmenta Road. Children in vintage costumes with faded, eerie makeup. They seem terrified and beg the neighborhood kids to hide them away, to keep them safe from the cunning man. There was a small clearing in the woods, now there was never there before, and a black thorn tree that doesn't belong at all. 
These old children claim that the cunning man is coming for them, and they want the local kids to protect them. But when families fall in Kalpad and the neighborhood splintered by bitterness, who will save the children of Padminter Road? My next book is Such Pretty Flowers by Kiyo Sada. Get it out of me. It was the last magic Holly received from her brother Dan before he was found cleaved open in a lavish savannah townhouse of his girlfriend Mara, Mara. Police ruled his death as suicide, but sparked by psychosis. But Holly can't shake the idea that something else must have happened. Something involving another message he sent earlier that night about a game Mara wanted to play. My next book my next book is Red Dark and Blues by Andrea Hannah. Town of Bishop is known for exactly two things, reoccurring windstorms and an endless field of sunflowers that stretches farther than the eye can see, and women, missing women. So when three more women disappear one stormy night, no one in Bishop is surprised. The case is closed and the daughters are left in the dusty shared house with the shattered pieces of their lives. Until the wind kicks up, a terrible secret at the mother's much delayed memorial. When secrets come the lies, each of the girls is forced to confront. After caring for the other girls, Delilah, Delilah would like to move on with her boyfriend Bennett, but she can't bear his touch. Whitney has already lost both her mother and her girlfriend Eleanor, and now her only solace is an old weather vein that seems to whisper to her. June, Whitney's twin sister, would rather ignore it all, but the wind kicks up a secret too. The summer fling she had with Delilah's boyfriend, and more than anything, Bo wants answers as she wants them now. Something happened to their mothers, and the town's folk know what it was. She's sure of it. Bishop has always been a strange town, but what the girls don't know is that Bishop was found in odd blood, and now it claims My next day. book is Sister Maine and Monson by Lucy A. Snyder. A virus tears across the globe, transforming its victims in nightmarish ways. As the world collapses, dark forces pull a small group of women together. Amy, even, once quite a closet and acquires an appetite for a woman and her brain. Why does forbidden fruit taste so good? Savannah, a professional BDSM switch, discovers a new turn on, committing brutal murderers for her elvish masters. Malena, plagued with chronic tumors, is too horrified to acknowledge her divine role in the upcoming apocalypse, and her growth multiplies, so too does her desperation. This kind of reminds me of The Last of Us. It has the same apocalypse virus thing going on. My next book is Delicious Monster by Lisa Sambury. Lazy sees dead people. Something impossible to forget in bustling ghost packed Toronto. She usually manages to deal with her unwanted ability, but she's completely unprepared to be dumped by her boyfriend. So when her mother inherits a secluded mansion in Northern Ontario where she spent her childhood summers, Daisy jumps at the chance to escape. But the house is nothing like Daisy expects and she begins to realize that her experience with the supernatural might be no match for her mother's secrets, nor what lurks within these walls. My next book is Games for Dead and Ghosts by Jen Williams. When Charlie was 11, she created a monster. For Charlie and her niece Katie, it's supposed to be a quiet holiday in the peaceful, out-of-the-way seaside town of Hithin Church, England. Charlie is researching a book on the folklore of the area, and the gloomy sea and dangerous caves seem to offer up plenty of material, while Katie is just there to run wild and get some fresh air. But Charlie's research reveals a deeper, darker secret, one that uncovers her own, carefully hidden past because young women are going missing again, a teenage girl snatched from the bleach in broad daylight, and have vanished, and before that other girls through the decades have vanished, from the area, their families left with no answers and no bodies to bury. Charlie's creation was a thing of felt, straw, fury, and a rusty pair of scissors in the dark. It couldn't be her monster, could it? Charlie is set on discovering the truth about the girl's disappearances, but she's about to encounter a force of pure, obsessive malevolence that threatens to destroy anything in its path. My next book is All Dead, All the Dead Lie Down by Kiri McCauley. The sleeping house was very much awake. At days after tragedy leaves, Marin Blith alone in the world, she receives a surprising invitation from Alice Lovelace, an acclaimed horror writer and childhood friend of Marin's mother. Alice offers her a nanny position at Lovelace's house, the family's ghost of Maine estate. 
Marine accepts and soon finds herself mining other speculative girls. Thea buries her dolls one by one, hosting a series of funerals, while Len does everything in her power to drive Marine away. Then Alice's eldest daughter returns home unexpectedly. Evie Hallowell is every bit as strange as her young. Then Alice's eldest daughter returns home unexpectedly. Evie Hallowell is every bit as strange as her younger sister. Marvin is quickly drawn, by, drawn in by Evie's compelling behavior and ethereal grace. But as Marvin settles in, she can't escape the anxiety that follows her like a shadow. Dead birds appear in Marvin's room. The children's plague escalate. Something dangerous lurks in the woods, leaving mutilated animals in its wake. All is not well at Love Last House, and Mary must unravel it in secret before they consume her. The next one is She is a Haunting by Trang Thahan Trang. A house with a, with Jane, when Jane the Green arrives in Vietnam for a first with her estranged visit. When Jane Nguyen arrives in Vietnam for a visit with her estranged father, she has one goal. Survive five weeks pretending to be a happy family in the French colonial uh, house, but is restoring. She always tried to fit in. So she always tried to fit in, so if she's straight enough, Vietnamese enough, American enough, she can get out of the college money he promised. But the house has other plans. Night after night, Jane wakes up paralyzed. The walls exude a trembling sound while bugs leave their legs and feelers in places they don't belong. She finds curious traces of her ancestors in the gardens they once tended. At night, Jane can't ignore the ghost of the beautiful bride who leaves cryptic warnings. Don't eat. And the last book is Our Own Unique Affliction by Scott J. Moses. The story of Alice Anne, a dejected immortal who longs for her life in the sun, never gaining guilt, loss, family, meaning, murder, and all that comes with the curse of living forever. An extension of bleak, quiet until it's not, hallucination of duality, life with fangs, and empathy and blood, and grief. So those are all the most anticipated and most hyped, if you will, books that I can have, that I found. And uh, so let me know what is your most anticipated reads. Otherwise, please like, comment, subscribe, so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!